Tonight, we are going to be picking up where our last adventure left off. Uh, it was uh, the uh, quick start adventure that was that was given out during uh, during the Kickstarter. So, Free League has put out the, the first half of the adventure book uh, for their uh, for their Dragonbane product. So, uh, we thought, well, let's uh, give it a little bit of run. And uh, maybe we'll even kind of do a little kind of campaign series for 2023 and kick it off uh, at the end of this year and and uh, see how it goes. Uh, if you are interested in a, a Dragonbane campaign, hit that like button down below. Uh, if you are coming across our content for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe. But tonight we're going to be doing Dragonbane episode one, The Legend of Mderman. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. My name is Doug. Tonight on the show we're playing Dragon Bane. This is an upcoming RPG from Free League Publishing. Um, the backers have gotten the rule book and some of the uh, adventure book. Um, so we thought we'd see if there'd be an interest for a campaign. And maybe we'll do this quite regularly in 2023. Um, I don't know how far along we'll go throughout the year, but it will be uh, something that uh, will hopefully have a, a pretty decent storyline. Uh, so if you're in favor of that, like I said, please hit that like button down below and uh, that'll let us know that, uh, you know, there's interest for this kind of thing. Uh, we are a little bit of short, a little short on our uh, on our cast for tonight, uh, but uh, stay tuned for future episodes. We'll have we'll have more members of this party join us. Uh, we're, the plan is to have the original cast from from that first adventure uh, tonight. We're going to be featuring uh, three of the five, so uh, and that might happen from time to time, just because people have uh, you know personal lives and things going on. So without further ado, let me bring on the uh, the cast for this session, and that is Austin. Jason and Amanda. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hello. Much for coming on and and being a part of this uh, this session tonight. I, Thanks I, for having us. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm kind of excited about the idea of maybe doing this as like a campaign and and maybe having a, some sort of epic storyline and and uh, hopefully it doesn't. Uh, doesn't give away too much of, of what's in the starter in the in the, I was gonna say starter box. It's actually just a box set, which is really really awesome. Nice. Um, so hopefully it doesn't give too much of that campaign away, but I think it would be nice to have it featured here on the show. You seriously think that this group of people is going to find all of the things? This is true. This is true. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that. that Wait, we honest. will not. We will, will not. not. I may be playing Archmaster Aodon. I am not. An archmaster of any. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're gonna pick up uh, right where uh, where you left where we left off. Uh, the three of you uh, are now traveling to uh, this through this this mountain range. Um, a couple of your party members have, have gone off. They've had some other things that, that have gone on, but they they've said that they they would join you quickly and and uh, you know a little later on down the road. Um, so. We'll we'll see uh, we'll see. Hopefully we can we can uh, reunite the whole party here uh, next episode. Uh, Hungry in the chat is already calling out and saying, "I'm calling it early. Amanda's <laughs> dice will fail her." Now, what on earth makes you think that, Hungry? Just because oh, it happens well, literally I every it. game. I love it. All right, so let me set this. Let, let me set the scene. Uh, it says uh, there is an ancient and narrow pass that runs through the mountains, like a like an axe gash. Steep, moss-covered slopes rise to the snowy-laden peaks that occasionally be glimpsed through the veils of cloud. Somewhere ahead lies the misty veil, the legendary place where the empires of old stored their wealth and magical artifacts. It is, it is the rumor of these treasures that has brought you here, the vast riches and arcane secrets hidden above the ruins on the other side of the mountains. And you are not the first to be lured by such temptations. Since the orcs started leaving the area about a decade ago, a growing stream of settlers and adventurers have made their way to the Missy Vale. But you know that way is treacherous and fraught with peril. The old imperial roads have crumbled and the mountains are teeming with danger. The Drachmar Pass, where you now find yourself, is particularly infamous. The dwarves of the Kumar Mountains have warned that the human's return has attracted 
uh, ravenous beast to the area. Your fears come true when you suddenly hear a disconcerting whimper and you see a figure laying in the middle of the rocky trail, only 20 or so meters ahead of you. The figure is wearing a simple gray robe and is clutching a dark bundle to his chest. As the whimper turns into a rattling wheeze, you realize that this person is gravely injured. Oh. So you're in this narrow pass. Uh, about 20 meters ahead, there is a, a person laying on the ground and uh, they're kind of weaseling and whimpering and uh, they do not look good from what you can tell Im- immediately. Huh. Uh, one quick question. Have we been restored to full health, full power? Yes, we'll say we'll say that you've rested up and, and okay. uh, yeah, before right. you, had been, you, you ventured on. Just wanted to make sure. Sure. Um, we should help this man or person. Sure. Do you know how to help someone who's gravely injured? Unironically, I do. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I will. I will approach the prone figure and uh, speak to it. I guess. Um, like, um, are you injured? How can we help you? <laughs> he like lays on the ground and he's gasping and wheezing for for air and for breath. Is and, he like uh, bleeding? Does he have any obvious injuries? You see that there are uh, there is a uh, an arrow that has pierced right through his chest, oh, and ew. there are purple blue streaks branching out from the wound. Ah, oh, poison! Ew. I'm just assuming. I'm not basing it on any factual evidence. Um, we need to remove the arrow and heal the wound, I suppose. Um. McAndrew, you want to hold him? I'll pull the arrow out. Um, I kind of think that before we do that, it might be worth telling if we can just do a quickly see where the arrow came from. It went uh, in his back and out his front. Well, well no, without further I mean, ado, it... he he lurches up. Oh, <laughs> and and he just sits straight up, and his hands he he has this bundle in his hands, and he. He hands it over to, uh, hands it over to Chrisanna and says, ah! "Quick, take it." Uh, what? L- what Lanera, is it? Lanera will understand. Who? What? M- message from Master Weatherman. What? Y- you must find all four pieces. The, the secret of the Dragon Emperor, and then he what? falls and collapses to the ground. Uh, Did that make sense to, to anyone else? Dead? No, not currently. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, I had a picture of him too. I f- totally forgot to. Oh, ah! good lord! Oh, oh, my! Wow. Yeah, that he's not looking so good. Is not a healthy person. No, that, that's kind of what he looked like before he uh, collapsed and <laughs> okay. fell to the ground. They're, uh, um, they're probably in a better place now, anyways. I'm going to examine him to make sure he's passed. Oh, yeah, he's he's dead. He's deader than dead. Okay. Um. All right, so we have what? What did he hand you, Chrisanna? I don't know. I'm, I'm all just of a like, sudden an arrow f- lands in, to a thud right into the ground right next to you. Ah! Everybody, roll for initiative. Ah! Wow. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna roll. Uh, your it's gonna be a d10, and uh, we'll start with one and then go down. If anybody ties, I'll let you kind of figure out. Originally, there's there's cards that go with this, but it's kind of hard to do cards when you're, when you're playing on running. So. I got a five. Four. I got an eight. You got an eight. You got a four. Uh, I also get a four, so I'm going to actually go first because we kind of got the jump on you. Um, we are going to show you the map. Oh boy, a map. So uh, from each side of you, the the point in the middle of the screen right there is the dead body, and that's where you're at. Just kind of. Uh, uh, inspecting and being next to this this body that collapsed um, to each to the north and to the south of you you see uh, goblins kind of pop out from the rocks and they've got arrows uh, there are uh, th- three of them and uh, they uh, start shooting at uh, a few of you let's see here uh, oh, they are so he let's let me bring up my 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 
All right. So I have a skill level of 10. Oh, I rolled a 17. So I missed with, with my, uh, with, with my role for the, uh, goblins. So they, they shoot a few, few arrows in the air. They thump, thump, thump down onto the ground. And now it is your turn to, uh, to try to deal with those three goblins that are uh, hiding in the rocks. Are, are they at ground level? They are at ground level. Um, can I reach them and make an attack in the same turn? Um, what's your movement value? That is eight. Eight? Um, I'm going to say yes. All right. Yeah, I'm going to do that because uh, there's one thing in is it's uh, ill-tempered. So, um, there so there's there's two up north and there's one on the south. So we'll, we'll let you all split them up that way. I'm going to go towards the two. Okay. Um. All right, so I have a battle axe. I will make a roll for that. Okay. Uh, it's a four, so that's a hit. That's a hit. Uh, two so D eight damage. You... Oh, there we go. Ten. All right, and you used your strength bonus. Uh... Oh, now I, I immediately forgot about that. No, oh, no, I can't. So Fourteen. The this, so the way this uh, system works is, is it roll under system. Uh, uh, Austin used his. Uh, I'm trying to think. Your slashing is that what he used? Your slashing ability. Yes. And, and uh, or for your axe, your axe ability, and yep. uh, rolled under the fourteen. Uh, it does two d8 damage plus the this damage uh, bonus for strength, which is a d4. So you did fourteen damage. Yes. Uh, he has one uh, armor, so it's 13 damage. Uh, yeah, we're going to say he's done. He's toast. You just slice him right in half, and he goes okay, crumbling okay. to the ground. Uh, I don't suppose I can take a free action to quack loudly at the one, the other goblin right near me. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll allow it. I love it. I, I'm not going to make that sound, but, but picture that in your heads. Awesome. It's a very angry quack. It's like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, who who goes next? Um, I had a five. You had a five. Okay. I think that you go next. Okay. Um, how far away are uh is the other goblin on the other side? Um, it's probably what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's eight meters away. Okay. Um. I will move four meters towards it. Okay. And then I'm going to attempt to cast Gust of Wind. All right. Uh, let's see if I can get that to go properly. Uh, natural 20. Nice. Okay. So that uh, does like double damage, I believe. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it the other way around, though? Am I not aiming oh, no, no. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm so used yeah, to uh, rolling over. That's a critical over. fail. Uh, yeah, that's a crit <laughs> fail. Um, I think you have to uh, do some sort of... Uh, is is that a spell? Isn't there like a something yeah, you have to roll for that if you uh, I didn't roll a critical, see fail critical on? failures on spells? Well, here in the meantime, put a little check mark next to that skill because you rolled a one or a twenty. <laughs> uh, anytime you do that, that's kind of how you level up in this game. Um, you're going to, and um, we'll talk about that at the end of the session. Um, okay, just the spell just fails. It's the not, spell uh, just fails. So and, it just it just sputters and what, dies, and I lose the points. Oh, okay. Awesome. So I will, you know, be waving my hands around, attempting to cast a gust of wind, and I'll like catch my pinky on my other finger and be like, "No!" Ah! <laughs> sure. And I also take the status effect for that too, right? Is that roll to twenty? I believe so. A, yes. Does it? It's an automatic condition, um, or is it only when you push? I think it's only when you push. Okay. All right. I won't worry about that then. I'll, have to, I'll, I'll double check in here a little bit. I've That's been funny. reading so much about the adventure that, uh, yeah. that I, and I tried to refresh right. on the rules a little I'll bit. just be like tangled up in my robes, cursing. Mm -hmm. and... sure. <laughs> uh, Chrisanna, what uh, what would you like to do? So, I have throwing knives. All right. I'd like to throw a throwing knife at okay. one of these 
one of these goblins, or at least attempt to. Sure. All right. What am I? What am I trying to roll to throw? To um, it should it should tell you uh, you're going to have some sort of spear or uh, knives. Probably knives. You have a yes. skill under knives, so you're going to roll. I have a your... skill under knives. All right. So I would roll that, and hopefully you roll under that. Hopefully, hopefully roll under that. We'll see if I manage that. Um. No. Oh, okay. Would you like to push it and take a condition? No. What? What? No. I rolled okay. very poorly. So basically, you, you what happens is <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you'll re-roll it, and and uh, you'll also take you take an, a condition. Uh, there's six different conditions. Basically, they're tied to different attributes, and. Um, they give you uh, pretty much, they, they call it a bane in the system, but it's disadvantage. You'll roll 2d20 whenever you use that attribute and you'll take the right. lower score. You'll take the lower one. Um, yeah. So uh, the. Fwing. <laughs> you throw the knife and it just goes whizzing past the, the goblin. The goblin uh, then uh, takes aim and uh, tr shoots, tries to shoot you instead. Of course. Oh, that just. Yeah, that's not a good. Uh, and that misses as well. I rolled a 19, which I oh, was like, okay. originally I thought that was good. And now I remember that we're no, a roll under system. It's bad. Um, so yeah, so that that is uh, round one. Let's uh, roll, D, uh, roll D10 again. Seven. Nine. One. <laughs> nice. Cool. Uh, four, five. What, what did you What did you roll, Amanda? Nine. Uh, what did you roll, uh, Jason? Seven. Seven. All right. Um, so, uh, McCann, you get to go first. Um, I think I want to try to hit the other goblin with the flat of my axe, uh, with the intent of uh, incapacitating it, so we can maybe question it a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, that is an 11, so it succeeds. Uh, yeah, so uh, you just want to stun it and just kind of knock him out? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Uh, just as you knock out this, uh, this goblin uh, from higher up in the in the cavern where it says that number that little number four is uh you all of a sudden hear this snarl and this gr and this growl and a oh. goblin riding a was it a warg is that what we call it it's a I don't big care what it is i don't want it <laughs> uh just pops this out and, okay and okay. starts charging towards uh but this particular one looks very fluffy it looks <laughs> it actually looks kind of cuddly i kind of i kind of want to squish its fluffy little belly yeah look at it i just want to rub its fluffy belly <laughs> it, it charges in at mccander and uh tr the goblin riding it uh s slices down and tries to uh to slice at uh our our, our duck warrior why does it fall onto the ground Oh, and I rolled a one. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna um, cut your bill off. So let's uh, let's get that. So he's got a. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, he's got his own attack. So I'm sorry. He's got a d6 attack. So I've got to roll a d6, and that's what the attack is. And that is a six. It's a spear charge. The war the warg rider tries to skewer a player character with his spear by charging straight at them. The effect. Uh, inflicts 3d8 piercing damage, but it can be parried. Okay. So, do you have a parrying ability? Um, I don't... That'd be under actually under abilities and spells, correct? Uh, it's a feature uh, on weapons sometimes as well. Oh, um, no, that's right. Yeah, I would say no. Okay. Uh, so, 3d8 worth of dan damage. That's a lot. That's a three. That's a two. That's a seven. So it does 12, 
12 Holy piercing Christ. damage. Yes, no. And it's piercing, so it goes right through your armor. Don't oh, like that, man, at all. Does, does the shield help at all, or not really? Uh, yeah, it probably would. Do you have a shield? I, I have a small shield, yeah. Okay. Probably, maybe. Yeah. Um... Oh, and you've got plate armor too, but oh yeah, it doesn't. Uh, Nor's armor, you said. Yeah, it doesn't. It goes right through. Um, yeah, so it's got a durability of twelve, so that takes care of that shield since it's uh, more than its durability. So the shield takes all the damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, that's right. a fair trade off. The shield was slowing me down, anyways. So it tries to skewer you with this big, with this big spear. It hits the the shield. You last minute, you hold the shield up. It totally just kind of jams into this the the shield, and he starts riding off with the shield uh, on the tip of the spear, and then kind of stops and yanks the the shield off, and and uh, starts to survey the surroundings. Um, and that would be the goblin friend that is next to Chrisanna. Oh boy. The, the goblin friend next to Chrisanna gets to try to use its short sword against you. Uh. And it misses. Okay, good. <laughs> Chrisanna approves. <laughs> and now it is. Uh, Eoden's turn. Okay. Um, the that did that goblin move towards uh, Chrisanna at all, or it is did. it okay? Um, I am going to step in and try to just flat out club it with my staff. Okay. I don't have the greatest amount of skill at it, but we're gonna give it a whirl. Let's see. Spears. Oh, low. There's uh -uh. no. Didn't didn't I, work. Mm. Um, well, no, I'm just, yeah, okay, yeah, no way. I have a five in staffs. <laughs> oh. So there wasn't much chance of that happening. No. But I presented it another target, so. That's all right, that's all right. Um, and now, uh, Christina, what would you like to do? Okay, so the one that's near me, right? Yep. And and now uh, Aiden is is attacking it. Yeah, he tried to attack it, and it just kind of, uh, kind of. Uh, but it, you know, it does Honestly, count. it didn't really it barely look like an attack. <laughs> but does it count as being in melee combat with him at this point? I will say sure. So okay, okay, because that means I can backstab it, and it can't Ooh. dodge it. Hey. Okay, think... all right, that's good. Because now we've got it. it all surrounded, like so. That okay. costs me three willpower. Okay, but so I have to make a note of that. Sure. But then I get to uh it says here that then I can uh it counts as a sneak attack, which means it cannot be dodged or parried, and I get a boon to the roll. Oh nice. So you get to nice. roll with 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 advantage. Yeah. Advantage. Awesome. Yeah. Banes and boons are what uh, what this game is. What they're called here, yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I rolled a one. Nice, that's awesome. So it does double damage. Yeah. Um, All right. So yeah. it's a. So how does that work with? Because it also says that the number of dice rolled for the damage is increased by one. So instead of a d8, it's two d8. Two d8. Yep. And so it's then, and it's so double double, double the base damage. So it would be it would be double. It, it would be like three d8. I think because that would be. Is that is that how that works? Okay. Yeah. All right. I will it take your word for, for it. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's working today. All right. So that is going to be sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you uh, you, you decimate it. So uh, if you want to just you just backstab <laughs> it, you just you just like slash it right into the into the back. And... Ao Dad's just absolutely horrified by what just <laughs> happened in front of him. He's like, ah. <laughs> There's blood everywhere. <laughs> you just kind of like flail at it. And meanwhile, I just turn him into a mince pie. You've only got the one dagger. How did you move everything so fast? <laughs> um, so that takes care of the goblins. Now you got the, uh, well, you've got the rider. warg rider that uh, everybody roll a d10 again. And we'll roll right. for uh... three. Oh, oh, it does contagious. Now I just threw mine on the floor. 
I don't know where it went. Uh oh. I have more. I just don't know where that one went. You better have more. That's just weird if you like. Oh my god! There goes another one. Doug cursed me. I didn't. I think it was uh about an eight. Yeah. What's it? Now I need work? to find my my other All right. So I rolled a one, so I get to go first. I'm going to go back and try to charge uh uh McCander again because he just kind of uh decimated my my friend and yeah, no my uh uh kind of knocked out the other one so i'm gonna roll a d6 roll another another six so that means that uh oh wait no he rolled we'll, we'll do another one because he rolled a five this time um and uh the warg just comes charging in and uh grabs McCander by his uh with his teeth and uh the warg okay yeah the warg does yeah. And he uh, inflicts 2d10 piercing damage. He's <laughs> angry doggo. That's one. And that's one. So it does two points of damage. You... <laughs> so so he does two points of damage, but then he hurls uh, uh, McCander 2d4 meters away. So that's four. Oh. That's two. So he, he grabs him, kind of shakes him a little bit, does a couple points in damage, and sh throws him six meters away uh, over towards where you all are standing. Uh -huh. Is the okay. the bite damage, is that like a crushing damage or a piercing damage? That's like a piercing damage. Oh, okay. Do I take damage from being tossed too? No. Okay. We'll say your, your, your uh, armor. Not, not too bad. You managed to tuck and roll for that part. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, I think it's uh, McCander's turn. Did you roll a three? Uh, uh, I rolled. I ro you rolled a three, Jason? I rolled a three, yeah. All right. So it's uh, Aodin's turn. Um, so the warg is the issue here. I am going to um try a low level fireball um all right regular regular standard everyday fireball just a regular fireball <laughs> just a standard your standard, standard no. issue As you, oh i got a five this time so that works nice okay we'll see what kind of damage is gonna do five points of damage for the warg awesome yeah so uh you throw the fireball it hits the warg right into the side and uh you hear it kind of whimper and, and kind of jerk back a little bit and uh, kind of shake it off a little bit. Um, and uh, it just kind of it looks at you and kind of snarls uh, as uh, it uh, kind of gets a little, did a little dazed from having this fireball right in its face. Uh, Chrisanne, it's your turn. Or no, is it McCander's turn? Who yeah. rolled the... I think it's McC McCander, you were four, yeah. right? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I rolled like an eight. I'm yeah. sure it was not my turn yet. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll... I guess I'll close the distance and try a Battle Axe. All right, attack. let's do that. Ooh, that's a three. Nice, yeah. So it's going to do... See, rolling low all the time sometimes pays off. It does. <laughs> With this game. As a side note, I just remembered I have these scroll D8s that I have never used, <laughs> and I'm very excited to use them for this. Nice. That's, so That's awesome. That's right? cool. Wow. So two, uh, that's, 2D8 plus your D4? Yep. That's going to be 17 damage. Yeah. Um, you totally Boys. just kind of get up, and uh, you just wail that, uh, that battle axe right across, and uh, it hits the the warg right into the side there and uh i'm trying to see here you hear it just give this this yelp and uh it starts to retreat uh to where uh the knocked out uh, goblin is and uh, you see the uh, warg rider reach down scoop up his friend and then it just bolts down the the ravine and uh just runs away. Okay. 
with this with this gaping gash on its side that's just bleeding and and uh, pouring out blood as as it's uh, uh, you know howling. I, I'm guessing somewhere in this scuffle, I dropped that package. I mean, maybe. I mean, sure. I'd, I'd put it down somewhere. I, sure. Now that we're no longer being attacked, because we got them all right, they're all yeah. gone now. Yeah, they're all I was gone. Following now. that correctly, okay. I'm gonna go and and look at this package now. Sure. Uh, so you open uh, you open the package up. Inside is um, immediately you see this map. Uh, it is the map oh. of the Misty Vale. Okay. Uh, so it uh, has a map of of uh, the the whole island or wherever that uh, you're at that you're in. Um, it also shows you you also as you're digging through this bundle, uh, you see a part of like a statuette. The statuette is mostly just a pedestal. And lower legs, and then part of a bottom sword. It's some feet. <laughs> and we needed that that person that died said we needed four pieces. Uh, you'll see. Uh, he says. Uh, so we'll do a quick flashback. You know, Cassandra's is thinking back to when when she acquired this bundle and uh, the uh, whole three minutes ago. The 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 the. the person that was not doing so well says quick take it Lenara will understand Where message from master weatherman must find all four pieces the secret of the dragon emperor so i was right four pieces yeah all right four pieces to the... Lenara from the weatherman yes um, can you show that map again for a second? You sure can. I mean, I sure can. Wait just a second. Let me... Uh... Okay, so we are in Drakmar Pass, right? You are. Mm-hmm. So we're very, at the, very much at the bottom end of that map right now. Okay. Right. So I'm just looking for, like, landmarks and stuff. Is there a, a spot that says Lenara's house? Uh, there is not. You know oh, that... That would uh, be too easy. That would be, that would be very easy. <laughs> Um, you know that uh, uh, probably the nearest settlement to you would be that uh, outskirt uh, in, that's indicated uh, just a little oh. bit north of you uh, as you uh, go through Drakmar Pass through the mountains. Um, you're kind of coming from the left area um, and coming through the, uh, through the mountains, and uh, you know that the, the closest settlement would probably be outskirt. Okay. All right, so we have a, now we have a destination at least. Sure. Um, um, we should probably not dally here, though. Goblins are pretty notorious for being pack creatures, so they'll likely be back. I don't really want to get numbers. shot at anymore. <laughs> are, are the three of you looking at this? Looking at this map? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I am, yeah. All right. Can Can you all give me a d twenty roll for? <laughs> um, let's see here. What uh, What should we give you? Maybe. I don't have that skill. Spot hidden, maybe? We'll do spot hidden. Sure, I'm, I make that. I'm bad at that. I made it. <laughs> I did not. Okay. Uh, Chrisanna, since you're holding this uh, piece of the statuette, the pedestal and the legs, you immediately notice that it matches the illustration that's in that lower corner of oh, the map. Oh, it does hey. too. Hey, look, it's those feet specifically. Okay. All right, so these are the other four pieces in the other four corners then. I guess. All right. Not entirely. Wait. Actually, wait. Put that map bag up, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Get that back here. Okay. I'm just looking because at the feet, there's a little that stuff coming up off of it. it goes to that, what looks like a wizard there? Uh, but, sure. Sure, yeah. And then on the other side, there's um, that other piece, the little squiggly bit goes up to like a castle. Uh-huh. Um, okay, wait, this theory falls apart because the other two pieces don't point at anything. <laughs> I mean, mm. it was a good theory. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so uh, you know that uh, Drakmar Pass will probably bring you to uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 outskirt. Probably the easiest. Oh look at this, Chief Peach. Thank you so much. Piece of the statuette thing makes me think of the statue in the Goonies. Mm. An excellent movie. I love it. I love it. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so it's up to you as to what what you would like to do. You've been uh, given this uh, piece of statue and uh, a map, and kind of told uh, to uh, find the other three pieces and to kind of give it to uh, this person. Yes, Lenara. Uh, right. And well, I mean, I think that I think that we put, should probably go to a settlement and try to figure out who this Lenara person is. Yeah, where oh, we I might agree. be. Able to find her can we quickly search the goblins and then hightail it i guess like I, I feel like we need to like hustle up uh sure you can search the goblins yeah i'm Just not interested really in searching the goblins i want to search this this guy and see if we can learn any more about who he is or where he came from yeah good point <laughs> oh we're also were the arrows from the goblins co coated in similar poison uh yes they were oh all right then it's a good thing none of us took an uh, arrow hit then uh, let's see here. So who wants to... So uh, Aodin's going to go take a look at the goblins and Chrisanna's going to go take a look at the the, uh, the weatherman? weatherman? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, you notice that uh, he just kind of... He's kind of turned blue and he's got this uh, these streaks that have kind of... Uh, he's just kind of bloodied at this point and he's got all these like kind of just these brown robes that he's wearing uh no other signets or sigils or anything on him uh, i'm just trying to think here no i don't think so okay okay does he have anything else valuable on him no it looked like he was just kind of running through running through the uh uh, just kind of going through with just just that stuff. Um, actually, I take that back. Let's 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 change this a little bit. You do search his his body, and you find like this black symbol branded uh, on his left forearm. Oh, okay. What okay. does the symbol look like? Um, it just kind of looks. It's kind of like this misshapen uh, sigil that just kind of. Uh, kind of has some horns and and some. I'm just trying to think here. It's got horns. Okay. It's got horns. It's it's kind of a weird looking symbol, but it's got horns. Okay. Hmm. Sigil with horns. Yeah. Hmm. All right. We'll have to remember that for later. Yeah, and we will uh, double time it in the, our direction of intended travel, I suppose. All right. Uh... Aodin, did you check the? Did you were you searching the uh, the goblins? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you didn't really see anything of noteworthiness. Uh, you may, found like maybe a, a short sword um, and a short bow on on a couple of them, um, and you also kind of see a, a black, uh, also a black mark, kind of a brand uh, on. Uh, one of their right shoulders. Is it similar to the one mm -hmm. that was on? It is, it is not. Okay. I will make note of it in my diary. Okay. Um, the way the goblins ran, is that the way that we're intending to move? Is that like further into the past where we're trying to go anyways? Um, it, it is kind of that, that direction. Yeah. But they're, they're hightailing it. Okay. So yeah, it's up to you what, uh, wherever you want to go from, from there. Um, you know, that, uh, probably the most well-known city in, in this area and probably the closest would be that outskirt area. If you okay. wanted to, to try to follow up on any of these, uh, yeah, I think. And for the time being, at least, that's our best course of action. So right. we make it there as fast as we possibly can. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. So you, uh, you, it takes you about uh, the rest of the day to get down this, uh, this pass. Um, there's, uh, there's kind of this winding road that, that goes through, um, these, uh, fields and everything and of high grain. And, and, uh, you see these wagon tracks uh, along the road and it's all paved. Um, there's a lot of smells as you're going through, you smell, uh, manure, smoke, rotting vegetables. Uh, but then you also smell all of a sudden freshly baked, baked bread and grilled meat. Um, and then you come across this settlement uh, surrounded by a palisade, uh, which lots of, which seems to have a lot of smoking chim chimneys peeking up uh, from beyond its sharpened logs. Um, the gate, the village gate is closed and flanked by two low but sturdy towers of stone uh, and pointed wooden roofs. Uh, drawing closer, you hear the stern voice of a man bark at you from one of the towers and says, Halt, strangers! State your name and business or turn back to the forest. This is a place of peace and decency. Is this guard Sam the Eagle? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> It's a good thing that we are peaceful and decent <laughs> folk, then. Peaceful yeah, we just, and decent. We just want to, and, and the American way. And, and the just, American way. We just want to, like, rest and take a bath. Hmm. Well, what's, what's your name and why have you come to Outskirt? Krasana, and we're traveling this way. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I should trust you. We, we like have to coin. keep things peaceful. Yes, well, if we offered entry to anybody who gave us coin, I would be a very rich man, and this place would be very in well very... funded. <laughs> <laughs> that too, that too, yes. <laughs> but it would be a very chaotic place. Let's put it that way. Would it be more chaotic than the goblins in the past that we dealt with? Mm. Yeah, they sometimes have coin too. Should I allow them through if they want to come in? Well, no, but okay, you can see then. we're not goblins. Uh, you can does tell by us, the beak. Does any of us have any like decent persuasion skills? I just checked, and charisma is not my strong suit. Um, <laughs> this is this is what the guy who appears out of the window looks like. Yeah, he does look a little like Sam the Eagle. He does kind of look like Sam the Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would, I would roll uh, persuasion. I right. got a twelve. Go for it. That is much better than my five. So. Ooh, that is a thirteen. Never mind. Ah! Swing and a miss. Yeah, he's still kind of doubting whether or not he should let you in. Uh, uh, what What do you want us to do? We, we just want to come in and, and have somewhere to rest for the evening. Hmm. We literally fought goblins on the way here. Like, what more, more do you want? I'm, I'll, I'll take out a goblin short sword and the short bow that I got. And like, this is some of their some of their weaponry. We've eliminated three threats from your area. It's true. Yes. Well, you know. That's got if to I knew earn us that a, you were here to stay. help protect these people too, I don't know. Um, you know, we've heard of lots of marauders and and people. Do I look like a marauder? I'm like six foot two, skinny as where, a rail, old bent over man. Where have you come from? Let me ask me. That, let, let me ask that. Where Where have you come from? Where did we come from? I don't remember. Oh well, we came from the Ritter Mound. We never really established anything past that. Uh, um, the Ritter yeah. Mound. <laughs> we we yeah. recently, yes, we recently explored the Ritter Mound. Are you? You're not those adventurers, have you? Are you? Uh, if it gets us through the door, yes, sir, we are. I thought there were five of you, not three. Oh. Uh, we we travel in single file to hide our numbers. No, the other two wandered off. They're going to catch <laughs> up with us later. Ah, you're. Your exploits there, and and your your victory, and and your adventures precede you. It has come all the way here to outskirts, and that you are grand adventurers, and that you uh, defeated this the 
the the ghost that uh, was I'll, was in I'll that have a place. brief flashback and shudder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very grand, very tired and desolate. By all Can means, we come in now. We should. We would be honored to have such adventurers of your stature here. In would love outskirts. to tell you the story over a drink right. and a hot meal. Yes. Let's, let you in here. Make sure to stop at the Three Stag Inn, and 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 I'm sure that that uh, that uh, oh, shoot, what's her name? I forget. What it is. Van Hild would would be glad to uh, give you a pint and uh, for your uh, and to to hear of your stories and f- of your adventures at uh, Ritter Mound. And, you, and slowly the the door starts creaking open, and. Uh, you uh, are allowed entered uh, entry into uh, outskirt. Nice, excellent. As we walk by the gatekeeper, I'm just going to say, uh, "Aren't you, aren't you glad you held us at the gates now?" Uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry. He looks at you and goes, "Had I known, I we get many a traveler through these gates to these gates, and you know it's it's hard to keep the riffraff out." Sometimes, and even, you know, someone that tries to keep them out, occasionally they get in. So we're, we're trying to be much more uh, selective as to who we let in and out of outskirts. So my apologies. Had I known that you are indeed the adventurers from Rittermound, I would have immediately let you in. Okay, so we have to lead with that everywhere we go now. The adventures <laughs> of Red Around. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Might even say. And all of a sudden, you see one of the other guards kind of whisper to uh, to another person, and uh, that person kind of just looks at you with, with big eyes and starts running to the uh, the center of town. You know, the last person that ran away from us, we kind of shot, but we're gonna let that pass. <laughs> all right. Um. All right, do we want to go directly to the three stags or do we want to go do our own thing? He says to his fellow traveling companions as they walk. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm up for the three stags. Yeah. I mean, McAndrew it's took, it's a, a, took a couple of decent hits. <laughs> right. And I mean, it, it, it's not a bad, uh, an inn is not a bad place to talk to people, try to True. figure out what, yes. what's going on. We could ask questions and learn things. Mm hmm. Uh, I, I will give you the map for uh, outskirt. It looks just like this. Uh, nice. So, as you walk into this uh, this area, um, you know you're coming from the south entrance. And, okay. Uh, what is that yeah. crazy thing on the hill? You see that there's like this kind of yeah, what- all these rocks, and almost it looks like. This place is built on some kind of wacky ruin or something. It looks mm-hmm. like it was maybe at one point a temple, and it's kind of fallen in disrepair. And uh, yeah, mm. but that's kind of in the center of the the uh, of this this village. And uh, there's houses and you know shops and buildings all around it. And there's even a little mill. And uh, yeah, all right. Our, our our destination is I'm gonna say number four. <laughs> Looks like uh, an inn. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Uh you go to the uh three stag inn. And uh it's a it's a many, nice are there a lot of people on the streets? Like population yeah, wise there, there, there seems to be. There seems to be. What's what's you know, the there's, general there's, mood? Is everyone yeah, in everybody, the Everybody everybody kind of uh, as you're walking along uh, you see people kind of whisper to themselves and look over at you and, and kind of uh, kind of look at, look at you with with like lo- with like big eyes like oh my god like <sighs> no nobody uh, has kind of come up to uh, approach you yet but uh, everybody's as soon as you kind of walk somewhere or walk down the street you kind of see this this kind of this series of of whispers and and stares at you as as you walk through town. Okay. I'm probably gonna <laughs> puff my chest up a little bit, and uh, as puff you know, I, I, right? Yeah, uh, as we're walking and like make it seem like the uh, the little bite marks in my body, like I don't even feel them. <laughs> Just try, try to present like very tough, you know. Sure. 
uh, yeah, you walk through the village square. Uh, there's an inn, there's a smithy, uh, there's all sorts of shops. Uh, you see a weathered statue that rises from the earth. It seems kind of like a, a strange relic from a bygone era, which seems to depict a warrior in antiquated armor. Hmm. The feet look anything like what we're holding? Do, I, do we recognize those feet? Um... Yeah, you you see that the feet kind of resemble the the feet that you have on the as part okay. of the uh, statuette piece. Good I call. will take out a take out a piece of charcoal and quickly sketch the statue in my book. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do with the with the statue, or is that are we moving on immediately from that? Or can I? I uh, I'd like to look and see if there's any like inscriptions or anything on it. If we can find some information. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any information. It just kind of... Um, it's pretty weathered. Mm. Um, but uh, give me a Legends and Myths roll. Uh, 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 Who's in the what's now? Uh, legends and Myths? Yeah. What does I that go under? That would probably be under... What's that? Was that like under learning or something? That would be under. Yeah, we'll give you. We'll give you like an in intelligence roll. Okay. I just barely squeaked under it. Okay. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like um, an an a, an emperor that you've seen in other places during your your travels all around this country. Uh, around this land, um, you know it's a fairly revered figure, but you're not quite sure who they are. You it's just know uh... that this person is is very uh, highly regarded, and, and it's somebody probably from the past. It, it's that guy, you know, Emperor. Uh, what's his name? That did guy. That thing, yeah. Yeah, you know, you see statues of him sometimes. He's some hmm. important guy. Super I... weathered though, so it's been here for quite some time. Yeah, well, it's it's old. They're all old. As as you're standing there, uh, you see this this young. Well, I don't want to say she's young, but um, you see uh, this female that uh, uh, kind of looks at you, and then she kind of watches uh, your movements, and she. Darts into the three stag in. Well, okay. Andy, that we're also going there. Yeah, convenient. Um, if we're done with the statue, we should pursue this woman. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll go into the. Th we don't need to chase her down. Just go into the inn. Oh no, we're not going to chase her down. We're going to go in with style. But when we get to the door of the three stag in, I'm going to throw it open, and I'm going to cast puff of smoke. It's, it's basically it's, it, it's like a cantrip that I have with basically it's like a smoke bomb it's like a magical nice. smoke bomb it goes kaboom nice. and I, we all step out of the smoke I like it I you're gonna have to remind me that you have that later I can make <laughs> good use of that yeah <laughs> um yeah so you go into uh, you, you're just going into the three, three stag in you said in a puff of dramatic in a puff smoke in a we're puff not of dramatic just smoke. going just, in not, 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 right just like a bunch of plants or anything we're just going to go in all badass sure 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 so you go in and uh, you open the door and i guess aodin was probably probably going to lead the way and then sure, I will. poof <laughs> and behind the the smoke kind of parts away and then standing behind it is the three of you all right um and uh, yeah, you uh, uh, you immediately are greeted by this uh, young lady. Uh, it's a different uh, different young lady. Um, she's like she she uh, uh, looks like she's she's in her forties. Uh, her name is she introduces herself as uh, Van Hild, um, and she uh, kind of has uh, graying hair in bulky braids and wears a thick leather, leather apron. Um, and she's like, ah, you must be the 
very legendary adventurers from Rittermound. Ah, uh-huh, that's us. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence here at uh, the Three Stags. We have beer, bread, and food at heavenly prices. Heavenly uh, Mikander's prices? ears perk <laughs> up at the sound of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't feed she that says, go, She says, "Ah, you must be hungry and and must would like some rest. Uh, here, here's a tankard of mead." And she yells to the bar. Give, give them each a tankard of mead on the house. And uh, if you've got any spare bread, uh, give give them some bread as well through our, our very noteworthy adventurers. I will happily uh, accept talking. the offer of free beer. Ah, yes. Help yourself. You're, you're here. Have a table and and uh, help yourself around. You see that this is a there's like a big dining hall and there's there's all sorts of uh, uh, all sorts of uh, people that are in this dining hall and just kind of staying at the inn. And they all kind of look at you. Um, a couple of them like that are near the door kind of cough and they're like <coughs> and they're kind of waving the the smoke around, <laughs> trying to. Uh, sorry. No, yeah. no, we're not. Uh, I'm smoke. not sorry at all. Okay. They're, they're, like, they're like smokers. Ugh, gross. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, you're welcome to uh, stay here, and uh, if I can right. be of any other assistance, uh, please let me know. I'm. This is this place is uh, yours. If you'd like a place to stay, I will get you a good rate, and and uh, anything for such noteworthy adventurers for in this in this uh, establishment. How badly injured is Macander? <clears throat> um, not that bad. I'm only yeah, down he's, two he's hit just points. Missing an arm, it's fine. It, right, it, he doesn't need it. And your shield was trash, right? Uh, yeah, my, my shield really did a lot of work. I'm only down two hit points. Okay, all right. Just wanted to make sure that I'm, even, I'm like, pretty good. We're not dragging around a half dead friggin' mallard, doing hey, yeah, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll I guess gather up at the table and uh, so we have that map. We have that piece of the statue. We know who we're looking for. Um, so what we need mostly is information. So um, all, all of a sudden, a young lady uh, walks up to the uh, up, walks up to the table, and, and you kind of recognize this uh, young lady from earlier from outside, and she places mm-hmm. some some mead uh, around. Uh, uh, in, in front of each of you, and says, uh, "Here, here, the, 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 these are for you. On on the house, as Van Hild said." Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. I will chug that whole thing. Mm-hmm. I'll just bang it on the table like, "Thank you." <laughs> there was there was bread coming too, right? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Van, Van Hild, you, you said you've got bread? She's like, Annabelle, yes, I, there's some behind the counter. They just, I just got some from the bakery this morning. Just go, yes, please please give it to our, our guests. And she scampers behind the bar and, and finds mm-hmm. a loaf of bread underneath and kind of you see her slicing it up and putting it in a basket and she kind of brings it over. Oh, oh. boy, bread. Excellent. So this is the one who was watching us in the street earlier. Yes. Okay. And she just kind of eyeballs you all and it's like, can can I get can I get you anything else? I mean, I think we're good here. Are you okay? Y- y- yes, I'm, I'm I'm fine. Thank you for thank you for asking. You seem awfully anxious. No, no. Not at all we just convincing. never have had such grand ad- adventures in in this hall and then all of a sudden you hear uh, this uh, woman next to uh, kind of a few tables over and she's like <laughs> oh grand adventurers <sighs> you've never had grand adventures what am i am i just chopped liver you, well, this is come on and you are um i'm althea shadow leaf did you say mouthia Althea. Althea. Mm, it's funny because I heard Malthea. Ugh. <laughs> yes, Have we heard of this she's name? She's got this. Is uh, a, she's, she looks like. Uh, she just kind of looks like a knife. 
and uh, wife. Or not knife, not knife, a knight. I'm sorry, a she knight. Like a knife. Knife. <laughs> and, I was gonna. Uh, sw- <laughs> and uh, she, you know, she's got armor on, and she's got a big morning star at her side, and uh, she's looking like, for a fight there, Althea. No, no, this is just my base of operations from here, and uh, you work in a tavern. Yeah, well, you know, there's uh, things that need to be done. With armor and a morning star in a tavern. Are you like the super bouncer? Yeah. I just know that uh, there are things that need to be observed in this area, and I'm going to be the one that does it. Observed. Fair enough. Um, You want to come sit? We're new. We could use some information. Mm. Sure. Buy you sure, a drink. I would, I would love to. And in uh, promise not to mock your name anymore. <laughs> I promise to be nice. Uh, you uh, you have uh, uh, you go sit down and uh, you you go to sit down and all of a sudden the door uh, opens again for the uh, the three stag in and in in walks this uh, wolfkin warrior who you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh see no puff of smoke though there's no, no puff of smoke this time and he walks in and uh yeah and ba- uh, what's it uh, baston that's uh, yeah that's the name of baston um <laughs> Kind we'll of stand up from the table, Baston! Kind of snarls <laughs> and, and uh, just goes, uh, what, what, what do you say as you walk into this room and, and see that, uh, the rest of your party? Sorry I'm late to the party. Let's get this thing started. Where have you been? <laughs> uh, full moon out tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what we did? Oh, Tell me. We fought some what goblins. Really? Yeah. Mm, sorry, See, look, I missed my that. Sander got got messed up, and it, they broke his shield. Do uh, do you Badly. all of you go up and and uh, greet Baston? Is that how how, it, how do you get up from the table that you were going to go sit down with? Uh... Oh no, I'm just standing what, at I... the table, like just to like be like, yes, Baston, you're here. Yeah. Okay. Calling him over. Come, come, come sit. On. All right. And this is the same table with the the knight at it. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. All right. And you can tell that she's just kind of annoyed that all of a sudden she's got this uh, this she's group that's at, at her table and she's trying to uh, <laughs> tend to business. And um, she'll take Nari, the information. Is, he's with us. He's just like this. She just kind of gets up, takes her morning star and puts it on her shoulder. And she's like, "Well, I've got serious business to do, so I'm." Going to go into the other room and and uh, take care of things. I would love the to tell room? you that it was lovely to meet you all, but we all know that I will see you all later. Okay. Well, this is very threatening. <laughs> She's awfully passive aggressive. Yeah. Anyway, Baston is here. It's what matters. Yes. What's that lady's problem? Uh, I think her armor's chafing. I don't know. Ah, that makes sense. That's why uh, I don't wear that heavy stuff. As uh, as you uh, sit down with Baston, the the, uh, the young lady that uh, was serving you all um, comes over and she's like, "Oh, you have another member of your party, another grand adventurer. Oh, would would you like some meat as well, sir?" Yes, yes, lots of mead, mead all around. Right, and she runs and, and goes and, and gets a, gets some some mead and uh, puts it in front of you and and uh, just kind of uh, tends to the tables all around you. All right, yeah, I'll, um, I'll uh, just slobber it down. Sure. Um, do you what, do you? inform Basson of what uh, what you encountered on your way to uh, Outskirt? Uh, yeah, we will yeah. We'll recap the tale, I guess. I imagine we'd give him a pretty full recap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
um, you just, you just, do you, uh, I, I guess, how does that all go down? Do you just tell him everything and you tell him about uh, the... Well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll explain it as best we can. Um, we'll make it sound a lot better than it actually went for us. Sure, sure. I imagine it sounds a lot... I imagine it sounds a lot like uh, C-3PO telling stories to the Ewoks. You know, just, just like making like sound effects and like, you know. And then the ward came in. Etc. Um, do you show... the stuff about the book, though? You're not going to mention the stuff package. about the what? Like, we're we're going to mention that we have stuff, but we'll show him. Here. I don't want to. I don't want to show him that. At like right now. Okay. Um. So you're going to mention that you have it? Is that what you just said? Uh, we'll mention that we have other things to talk about in private. Uh, mostly, it'll just be the the tale of the goblins and how we slayed, so killed them, how we killed the goblins, um, and made our way to this town, and were preceded by our reputation. Of course, we should. Do you? So you just you just explain the 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 goblin encounter, and then that you got here. Well, we'll explain that we tried to rescue a poor unfortunate soul, or we could hit, save him. And uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You, when you talk about this, uh, you uh, when you talk about trying to save the man in the road um, or in the past, uh, you see that uh, this the young server lady just kind of listens a little more intently. Oh, it seems to have caught your your attention. She's like kind of listening a little bit more. Hmm. But then she notices that you're you're listening to her, and she goes back to serving the tables a little bit. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if she would know anything about some of the sigils we saw. She's listening awfully intently. Right. Uh, Adon, do you still have the drawing of the sigil? Yes, I did keep it, yes. Um, maybe we should ask her if she's seen anything like this before. Good, it couldn't hurt. I will produce my diary and show her the drawing. Okay. Uh, the drawing of which which one? The one on the uh, uh, one on, on, the, on goblin. the goblin. Um, yeah, she uh, she goes. Oh, uh, yes, that uh, that's quite the uh, the emblem there. That uh, that's some sort of brand that the goblins have. Um, that kind of represents the the tribe of goblins that that they're from, and that's kind of the the mark of their leader. Um, what is his name? I, I, I can't remember what his name is, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I'm I think sure it's, it's not important. He's a goblin. I think it's Maladuk, I think is. <gasps> Macander, what do you think of that? Maladuk? Maladuk? <laughs> I think that's his name. I'm, I'm just trying to think. I can't. It's been a while. I, I don't really. We don't really have a lot of goblins here, but. From what I've been told from other adventurers, that that's some sort of mark of their leader, I believe. Hmm. Is their leader Maladuk. a goblin, do you know? Ah, uh, I believe so, yes. Okay, just thought maybe. Okay. Hmm. Yes, Ma Maladuk, yes. That, I'm, I'm almost certain that that's, that's his name. What do you mean? Okay. Pretty to the point here. Uh, we started talking about our travels, and you seem uh, a little more than interested. Um, do you have any anything you care to enlighten us about? It seems would, like you're listening with purpose. Well, it, it's probably not the right place to discuss such things, but um, the man that you discovered. 
What did he appear to look like? Uh, a weird old guy in a bunch of robes. Horrifyingly dead. <laughs> oh. Um, um, very, well, I suppose the way he looked when he passed is not relevant to how he looked when he was I, alive. Yeah, okay. But he was he, like a weird old man. He was the weatherman. Did he hand you anything? Everybody's eyes go wide and we're all like, uh, completely silent. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean he didn't hand us anything? Uh, um, or he, do you know where I could find this gentleman? Oh, that guy? He's dead. He's very, very expensive. Very dead. Mm. Super dead. That's unfortunate. Why? Did, did he happen to hand you anything or did you happen to find anything on it? On his person. <laughs> uh, m- m- maybe. Mm. Why? Yes, we should probably meet later on. If he did. Okay. Maybe well, not in a room full of random strangers overhearing yeah, us. Yeah. Where Where would you like to meet? And when? Um, let's meet out somewhere by the temple in the this okay. evening fair enough i will go back to servicing my my the tables here i will see you until <clears throat> i'll see you this evening okay um good. before you go back to work um yes we, I, I don't think you told us your name um here I am known as as I uh, forget what her name is now. Freaking hell. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally forgot. Uh it is I want to say Annabelle. I think that's what she said earlier, yes. yeah. A- a- Annabella. Annabella. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. Here I am known as Annabella. Okay. I will bid you adieu until this evening. See you then. All right. So I'd like to discuss this uh, thing that you've acquired. What What's that all about? We will talk about it later. <laughs> Why can't I know now? Because we're surrounded by unknown ears is why. All right. We'll tell you about it later. Let's all enjoy a meal, and then we can we can rest and clean up, and then we can go and we can talk about this in private. If that sounds agreeable to everybody, sounds I'm fine with it. That's fine with me. Um, uh, Van Hild asks if you would like a room for the evening, and uh, she says, "I will. I will give you half the rate since you're such grand adventurers, and we're such, it's such an honor to have you here." Uh, you get the uh, AAA discount, um, tr- half price. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I will uh, <coughs> instead of instead of fifth, five silver, it is now two and a half, and I don't give change. So just just want to let oh, you know. Okay. Ahead. <laughs> so three. Okay. okay. If I mean, if, a- if you would like to stay here, sure. We need somewhere to stay, so. Sure. So she writes you down and write, writes it down in a book and, and kind of takes the, the silver from you and puts it in her pocket and says, uh, the rooms are upstairs uh, on the left and on the right. Uh, it's up to you if you'd like to take one or two. I, there are multiple beds in, in each in each room, and I, I think that you could probably all fit in one if you wanted to, but such adventures as yourselves uh, and such high status, if you wanted to take two rooms, you're more than welcome to. Uh, two would be better. Ah, uh, best on snores, huh? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what he does when he sleeps. <laughs> I'm just thinking four of us in one room. It's probably not a good thing. Yeah, you don't want to know what I do yeah. when I sleep. <laughs> um. So yeah. So uh, she's like, oh, here's here are your keys. Uh, 
feel free to make yourselves at home, rest up. There's a common wash area upstairs. And uh, yes, let's uh, have, have uh, make sure to enjoy your, yourselves here at uh, outskirts and the three stag inn. Okay. So for the first little bit, all of us are going to pile into one room so that we can properly explain to Baston what the heck happened. <laughs> all right. All right. Where we'll pull out the map and the figurine piece and explain to him about the fellow that passed away and what we were asked to do. Um, and we'll show you, him all of that stuff. You show him the uh, the piece of the statuette? Yes. Yeah. And I'll show him actually the charcoal rendering that I made of the statue in the outskirts of the town, too. Okay. Which is actually right outside the inn, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Almost. It's, it's, close. yeah, it's kind of in the same yeah. area. No, not, we'll, uh, not too we'll far. We'll explain away. how he was an emperor from the past. Um, actually, maybe does Baston know anything more? Um, hmm. I don't know. Baston, do you want to give me a uh, a learning roll, maybe? All right. Let me look at my stats here. Learning is... All right, so I get a five... So you want to roll under, so it's a d20, roll under. So right. Three. This is the under. Yep. Uh, and roll. Hmm. Ouch. No. <laughs> do I add my stat or do I minus it? Uh, no, you just have to roll underneath it. Oh, um, yeah. Did not, did not. Yeah, no, you show, uh, <laughs> you, you show, uh, Bas <laughs> show Bast on this, uh, this, uh, these renderings and these drawings. And, um, it just, they look like something you've seen quite a few times, but you don't really know. It's like, you know, kind of like seeing like maybe an important figure on, on some sort of currency that uh, you know is important to that area, but you don't know the whole, you know, historical, you know, history, the, the, the whole reason why they're there. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So it's up to you all what, what you want to do next. Uh, well, we need to get McCander a proper shield fix. Mm. Okay. Right. So we should probably stop by the blacksmith to waste some time before the evening. Okay. Yeah, there is a blacksmith uh, down uh, down in the town. If you would like to go, go by. Uh... We may as well wander the town and make our presence known to everybody. Sure. Here. I mean, it's not right. like we're trying to hide. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Also, I, I would mean... like to sell this short sword. And bow. Okay. I don't. I don't need them. Sure. Uh, you exit the, the three stag in again, as soon as you exit, uh, people around town immediately are drawn, to, drawn their attention to you. And, uh, you can see that it's quite, uh, quite, uh, an ordeal that you're, you're there and mm. people are very excited that, uh, you're visiting, you know, these very noteworthy, noteworthy, uh, adventurers are in their town. Um, I'll keep an eye out as best I can to see if anybody's following us. I'm not particularly great at it. But okay. I'll case, also be listening using my canine-like hearing. Sure. And uh, nose. I'll be glaring at everyone just so they know we're not messing around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, they kind of like every time you glare at someone, someone just kind of like it's taken aback and like oh. Uh, you make your way to the uh, the the smiths, uh, the blacksmiths. Great. Uh, you see a large log building with an open front, and the glow of a hearth can be glimpsed through the smoke. And from the hooks in the ceiling hang all kinds of weapons and armor pieces. Uh, and a heavy hammer blows, and a uh, and a melodic dwarven rumble is pouring out into the village square. Uh, you right. see uh, a couple of dwarves, um, a male and a female. Oh, say we're in the right place. Uh, 
let me just take a look here. Cancel that. I was going to try to find a, yeah. Um, yeah, you, uh, is, um, how much are the daggers if there are any? Um, let's see here. I forget, uh, I forget the, uh, page six of the rule book. <laughs> forget. Didn't anticipate people buying any, uh, any equipment uh, this early on. We didn't think you but, would. Uh, yeah, yeah I guess uh, I guess I should have should should have uh, realized this. Uh, right. Oh, I don't. Either that uh, or we'll, Macander was about to be half chewed. We'll we'll right. say it's we'll say it's three uh, silver pieces for for uh, for what you're looking for. Mm. I'm trying to find it here, I can't seem to find it. All right. Now now that I know that. Uh, You know, people are looking for uh, other services, medicine, containers, tools, light sources. Oh, look at all this stuff I can have you buy. <laughs> Trade goods. Uh, yeah. What, what are you What are you looking for in particular? Just a simple dagger. A just, dagger. Just something to have in case in case I get into close combat. Okay. Because I yeah. I have spears, so it's usually you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you, we'll say that uh, you find one that's uh, on sale for for three silver. But uh, normally, uh, the the uh, dwarf that uh, comes up and says, "Ah, this is a uh, wonderful dagger. It's on sale. It's usually one gold, but uh, I will sell it to you for three silver." Hmm. Yeah, I'm one short, so. I can help I'll you out if you need best on. No, no. I have to. Well, I have he, stuff he, to sell, so we can sell. He's some got of that. the. He's ah, got this. Yes. He, he's got this pride thing, though. Um. No, no, that's fine. I'll come back. Okay. Right. Um. I have well, a short sword and a short bow that I will pull out and show them to see what I can get for them. And you see this? Uh, you see these? Uh, this. Oops. Uh, you see a, um, it's a, it's like a, uh, it's like a dwarf woman that uh, kind of has like she has like a beard, but like they're in braids, and she's got uh, uh, golden earrings, and she's and this is the person that was dealing with uh, uh, Baston, and and she says, uh, yes, you've you've got these. Uh, these weapons for us? Is that uh, you'd like uh, like uh, for us to make an offer? Uh, yes. Yeah. Ah, well, I don't usually do too much of the negotiations here. I will. Ha I will get my husband, uh, Bannon, Baden Badendor, um, uh, to uh, come over here and, and and make you an offer. And uh, you see him. He's just kind of, uh, you know hammering banging away yep. banging away with a hammer on his uh, uh and he stops comes over and says ah what do you've got there this looks like uh goblin weaponry it is i he liberated the, it from the goblins that were trying to kill me with it takes the short sword just kind of looks at it and uh takes the bow and kind of plucks it a little bit and says uh Hmm. Well, the going rate for uh, this short sword is, let me see here, short sword is uh, about eight gold. You know, I've got overhead and mouths to feed and insurance. Uh, how's, how's four gold for it? For the short sword? That's yes. fine. All right. So he takes the short sword and, and gives you four four gold. Uh, he looks at the uh, bow. He's like, "What? What are you looking for for this, this, this bow?" I'm keen to see probably half as much as the short sword, so at least two. Hmm, that's a fair, fair asking price. Yes, I can. Hmm. All right. 
you are a good negotiator, my friend. And uh, immediately, <laughs> immediately takes uh, two goal pieces, knowing full well that he can get much more than that. And oh, I'm, to you. I'm certain. I'm, 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 I'm a wizard. <laughs> Uh, if it doesn't some... cast a spell or involve some sort of mystical thing, I don't know a damn thing about it. So, so he gives you uh, five gold for these uh, six gold, six gold, six gold, I guess. Um, and he's like, he knows that he can get like thirty some odd gold, and he's quite, <laughs> quite excited about this transaction that's ta- going taking place. He says, "Ah, well, if you have any more uh, weaponry, just feel free to uh, let us know and make any other offers. We'd be glad to." Uh, assist okay. we can also we also do trades every once in a while if you are looking for trade-ins or well or my my mallard friend here needs a new shield so perhaps mm-hmm. you should right. with i i would like to talk to you about a trade um maybe a slightly unusual trade uh beneficial to both of us but um uh clearly you know of us and which means other people do what if i were to commission a shield from you Featuring the colors of my crest and the logo of your shop. That way, everyone sees me using equipment from the shop, and so, you you can sell replicas, a, a sort of sponsorship, if you will. So you want you want me to pay you, you want me to be do paid like in a NASCAR deal with okay. you. So so you want me to be paid in exposure? Is that uh, is that what I'm getting here? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was hoping for. Mm. I mean, it's it's great publicity. I mean, there's no way it doesn't benefit your shop. Mm. That is a an intriguing offer. I'm not quite sure if that's um, uh, financially in my best interest because uh, not everybody can come to uh, Outskirt, of course, and I don't know if I want. people to know say something horrendous happens to you i would hate for my name to be attached to such infamy and 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 something that might not be looked on favorably well i guess uh i know you had one grand adventure but are you capable of more? Well, I guess that's something that you're uh, going to have to roll the dice on. Um, how about <laughs> how about I craft you a shield with your crest, and every time you use it, you <laughs> you have to claim protected by Balin. <laughs> <laughs> Like a slogan, ad slogan. Yes, yes, yes. Every time you use it, and I will give you half price for this this shield. Well, I, I was thinking more along the lines of that. This shield is sure to bring you so much revenue that uh, maybe you could give me one to try out. Mm. Yes. Can I make a persuasion roll? You go ahead. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <sighs> Got a really channelable lock on this one. Uh, <laughs> that's a 20. Oh, <laughs> no. He's like, he, he goes, he, you almost had him at a point, and he was just like, uh, no, I'm sticking to my guts. I, I really need to get paid for this. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I've, been, I've been swindled a time or two, and I really need the money. Do you have any competitors in town? No, oh. I didn't. What kind of question is that? No, I I drove them uh, all don't, out. No, don't don't worry about it. I'll find them. I'll find them. Mm. Unless unless you want you know one last chance. Unless you want to just make the deal now, I, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll hold out my. Uh, I make the finest uh, duck hand. Any anywhere anywhere in this, uh, you can ask anyone in this in this city if who makes the finest weaponry, and it would be Balinor. And. If you would like to get some half rate, you know, goblin equipment that will probably crack under the first chance that it gets, 
By all means, go for it. I make high quality stuff. And I would argue that I am probably more well known than the four of you. Oh, McCander has a new side quest. <laughs> I'll and be poking around this area just just to see what's what's actually in the shop and uh yeah, what are you, are you looking for anything in particular? No, just just kind of poking, seeing if there's actually anything uh of use. Um yeah, I mean if there's just all sorts of there's you know, you see you mostly see um swords and lances and uh, you don't really see a whole lot of like staffs or wooden clubs but you might see a mace um okay. might see a, a hand a hand axe um all right the, mostly knives and daggers and short swords broad swords most most the uh, common you know metal melee weapons so there's really but, nothing fancy, nothing out of the ordinary going on. Um, let's say that you find this really nice morning star in the corner mm. that looks like it is very ornate and... Um, looks like someone put a lot of effort into forging this and making this this morning star. Okay, I'll go over and inspect it and check it out. You know, pick it up. Yeah, it's like ah, the uh, Balinor says uh, you've got a good eye, my friend. I've been uh, worked on that for a great deal of time. It's a beautiful piece. It is. It is. And I'll start kind of like swinging it, you know, getting a feel for it. I uh, swing that with great uh, authority. It's uh, a weapon that suits you quite well, my friend. It's like an extension, extension of my own arm. Mm, I would, I would say, it's quite dear to me. It's probably one of my finest pieces. And what would you want for this? Well. Normally, I would want uh, probably 14 gold for it. But since it looks so natural in your hands, and since your friend gave me such a great deal on his equipment, I will sell it to you for seven. Knowing that it is going to be used so greatly all right despite um, what your duck friend claims <laughs> <laughs> i will uh a mallard, not a duck. i'll see how much i can get for my long spear and my throwing spear uh yeah for your long spear you get where am i Long spear, you get uh, one gold. Okay. And your throwing spears, you said? Yep. Throwing spears. Uh, yeah, you get uh, a few. So you get like 12 silver for those. All right. And how many silver are making a gold in this uh, in Dragon Bane? Um, we'll do 10. Was it? Okay. So that would give me. Two gold. Okay. All right. How about this? I give you two gold now. Yes. And on my way back from completing our quest, I'll give you ten more gold. Hmm. I do like. Uh, I do like this. Uh, let me think here. I would like a little more money up front. Not opposed to this deal. Not opposed to it. Just think it needs a little more equity up front. I'll put in two gold for it. What's that? I'll put in two gold for it. Ah, four. Four, okay. Um, yes. 
So you give me four now and ten later? Yes. Hmm. Okay. It is yours, my friend. May it... Thank you, Adon. May it give you great victories. And make sure you say... This is brought to you by... <laughs> Bairdin. Whenever you use it. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be nice. No, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sponsorship wagon. <laughs> we have to have a big wagon with banners attached to every square foot of it from different sponsors. We all can thank uh, <laughs> McCander for, for that. Uh... <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right. Um I'm going to go back to my work. Uh, if you need anything else, my wife uh, would be glad to uh, help you. Um, Okald, Okald, uh, make sure these people are uh, well helped. They are quite uh, well-known adventurers. We need to make sure that they are return customers. And she just kind of smiles and and uh, kind of plays with the, uh, the braids on uh, her beard and uh, walks over to you, and he walks his back. Walks back to his forge. Do we need anything else? I don't think so. Um, it doesn't have to happen now, but I would like to find an upstart smithy in town, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try. Okay. I'm gonna try There's to make else a new we need right now. There's something that McCander wants. Right. <laughs> but, 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 you don't understand the level of petty that McCander can be. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um all right. So if we have nothing else to do, we should probably head over to this rendezvous. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, it's it's evening time now, and uh you know you uh kind of go back to the center of town. Everybody has kind of gone into their, uh, you know, their buildings and their homes. And uh, the street is, streets are, are fairly bare. Um, you're walking through the center of town. You kind of see the uh, the statue again. Uh, and then you see this uh, young, the uh, uh, Annabella go, psst, psst, I'm over here. I'm over here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, we, we, can, we can see you, Annabelle. It's okay. Where are supposed to be? <laughs> she said, uh, you, so earlier you said that uh, the gentleman maybe have, had given you something? Okay, first question. Why are you so interested? Um, just curious if it's the same gentleman that that I know. I told you it was the weatherman. Weatherman, yes, yes. Did he give you anything? Where do you what's, know him from? Yeah, what? What's your connection to him? Um, so around here, I am known as Annabella, mm -hmm. but my real name is Lenara. Oh, okay. Oh, this makes way more sense now. Yeah, he gave us some feet. You have the feet. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why did that sound so dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> may may I look at the feet? Yeah, sure. Here you go. And she takes the uh, the base of the statue, and she just kind of holds it, and she says. There's something about the dragon emperor. I don't know. There's more pieces. At... So you do know what this is, don't you? No. Ah, let me enlighten you with the background of this whole situation that's going on. <laughs> It's trying to time find for it exposition. <laughs> so, let me tell you about the legend of Umderman. The sword of the sword of 
Underman was forged by the dragon emperor Eladane, and she kind of motions to this the, the statue that's uh, <laughs> how handy that we're standing him. right next to him. <laughs> uh, Eight hundred years ago, it was forged when the world was a battlefield for dragons and demons. It is the blade of life, made to maintain the balance between order and chaos. She kind of looks around a little bit more, and she's like, "It is a weapon for the free." and unbound against the ancient evils, but in the wrong hands. Umerdun, Umerdun, no. Umderman becomes a weapon of tyranny, an instrument of demonic darkness or dra dragonic fire. Oh. After Illidan's death, the sword was buried in a crypt that can only be opened with a special key. A statuette, and she holds up the, the, the base of the statuette. A statuette split into four pieces, one for each direction under Eladane's rule. Oh. The truth is that what is today known as the Misty Veil was the heart of Eladane's empire. And Underman's crypt is hidden under the old temple ruin here in Outskirt Village. But opening the crypt oh. requires the four pieces of the statuette. And they have been missing for centuries, sought by Illidan's servants, as well as the followers of the demon prince Sathmog. They can likely be found somewhere among the ruins of the Misty Vale. The pieces of the statue or the minions of the okay. demon prince? The pieces of the statue. Okay, just making sure. Yes. <clears throat> So I was kind of right when I was showing you those points on the map there, Christina. I, that, that four corners thing was actually fairly smart of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good call. Um, yeah. So, from what from what you know, uh, these four scattered pieces are they metaphorically in the four corners of this area? I think that they're literally? just in. I, I we're not quite sure. We think that they're in just four separate areas of this kingdom and they have to be put back together to open the crypt right, right. so that we can get so that we can obtain Umerdan. Um, um, Umderman. Yes. Umderman. Um, so I'm part of a sacred. I'm part of a sacred organization called the Truth Society, which strives to bring ancient artifacts and lost knowledge back to humankind. Oh! Since you are such notable adventurers, I would like for you to help me find the lost statuette pieces and open the crypt of Eladane. Our, our order is not rich, but we can offer you. 50 gold coins per piece in the honor of fighting for a good cause. Okay. But beware. Pay bills, but, gold bills. but beware, an order of dragon worshiping knights is also looking for Underman. And they seek to reestablish the old draconic empire and enslave everyone living in Misty Vale. Uh, yeah, that sounds I bad. Know. It sounds like a terrible, terrible, very bad book. Um, do you happen to have any more accurate information as to where we can find the other pieces? This is a fairly large realm. Yeah, I, I'm just going based on rumors, but I. The Do last... you know how the weatherman fellow found the first piece? I don't. He just contacted me and said that he had found a great discovery, and that the first of four was found. That's all I know. When when he contacted you, where was he? Did he tell you his location? He did not. Uh, he did not tell me where he was. Hmm. All right. Um, did he leave anything behind when he left? Like, does he have a room we could search, or paperwork um, that he might have take not taken? I don't think that he has ever been in outskirt. All right. I have never, we have only met outside of this town. Okay. 
Uh, right. That's... Okay, so four corners of the realm. So basically, we just need to pick a geographical corner and go for it. And, and start heading that way, I guess. Yeah, and then just start yeah. asking questions as we go. I mean, this thing is tiny. Like, yeah. The, the, feet, the feet fit like <gasps> a palm in the hand, right? Uh, yeah. It, it's, and she, like, looks at you, like, like to make sure that you're handling it with great care. Oh, <laughs> let, yeah, yeah, let, yeah. let me Juggling sniff it. it. Can I can I get a scent no, off no. of it? Uh, all right, but be gentle. Don't get your wet snoot. No, on you, it. you can hold it. I just want to sniff it. Yeah, and don't get any nose prints on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Does he get any kind yeah, of Yeah, that's off? the stuff. <laughs> can I can I like recall that scent? <laughs> um it just smells like a dead person. Mm. Sweet. Women probably had it. Delightful. Right. Yeah. All right. I know um, exactly what that smells like. <laughs> yeah, we did pull it off a dead guy, so. No, oh, that's he, fine. He didn't give you any indication as to where else he might be going then. No. He was just on his way here probably to give you this piece. Right. I would He's... I would say probably adventuring in some of the more well-known areas for treasure and right magical well, areas would probably be your best option i you could maybe start at bothids bothhills load the Kumar mountains that the dwarves mine oh okay that's yeah. uh when the, when they dug too deep into those mines it unleashed some nameless horrors of the world on the world, uh, okay. but they found some incredible treasures there, uh, and they unearthed heaps of gold, silver, and shimmering element uh, emeralds, crystals the size of a goblin's head. Apparently, it's all still down there. Maybe, maybe a piece is down there along with it. All right. Well, I mean, that's something to go on, if nothing else. It sounds like a plan to me. All right. Um, um, there's also there's also the uh, you know the temple of the purple flame. That's uh, a that very well known area. Oh okay, right. Uh, it's, uh, the Magna Woods is a diseased forest, and we all we all know there is a malady is that the, where the malady is coming from. The temple of the purple flame. It's a crumbling okay. remnant of ev of an evil age where forbidden knowledge and demonic residue rests among untold sea treasures under the overgrown rocks. Okay. Right. Hmm. Very ominous. I'm just saying that there's a couple areas that you could probably check out and see if that's... So this dragon cult, um, have you had any interactions with them at all, or do we just know of them? Uh, yes, there are quite a few. I mean, they usually have, I mean, I don't want to name names in this town, but I think you've probably encountered one already in the... Oh, wait, not mouthy. Just say Mouthy. Yeah. Yes, Seriously? Mouthy, I would okay. guess. All right. All right, that's something to keep an eye on then for sure. She was yeah, she was actually when she left, she said something about going to keep an eye on something. Fair enough. Okay. So I was just thinking though, like if worse comes to worse, we can just follow them. They're looking for the same thing we are. If we find them in an area, well obviously there's something to be seen there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, if we decide to go after these things for you, um, what do we? As we find them, do you want them to? Do you want us to bring them back here? That would be great. Fair enough. I just wanted to make sure. Sure. Um, okay. Um, and then I, I will piece them together and unlock the crypt. Um, no, it's too complicated for us. <laughs> well, I mean, if we have to roll, yeah. Um, yeah. A quick out of character question: This map, how big is? Like, what's the scale? Um, 
Like, is it like hundreds question. of miles or like twenty miles? I mean, it's it's gonna take you a while to. I mean, what does it what does it say up in the corner? It says fifteen. Oh lordy, I can't read that, dude. Fifteen uh, somethings kilometers. Um, yeah, it's, kilometers. Oh, I love these people. <laughs> so this, um, this is wait 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Oh yeah, so this map is, isn't huge. Yeah, it's not not huge. I mean, it's gonna take you probably a day or two to get oh, to yeah, from yeah, place to few, place. Yeah, it's a few days here. Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. okay. We can do this. We got this. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thank you for the information. Yeah. You're welcome. We should probably just break up and go our separate ways before somebody gets. Extra sure. Yes. No, that's fine. I totally understand. I really want to throw a puff of smoke down. <laughs> you want to what? What did you say? I really want to throw so a puff, of smoke, puff down of smoke again. and, and run away. <laughs> Maybe I'm, ah. I, no, ah. if, you want to, if you want to, go for it. No, I would just draw attention. <laughs> as funny as it would be. All right. Um. Yes. Okay. Well, the night is basically gone on us now. Unless, did anybody have anything they wanted to do this evening before we went to the inn? How so? How late is it at this point? It's pretty much night. It's at this pretty point. much the evening, yeah. Okay. Um, as you're walking, walking home, uh, to, I guess you're walking to the inn. Is that is that probably well? Safe yeah, it's right you? across the road from the statue. So yeah. Um, as as you uh, are walking through the road, all of a sudden, uh, you you see this uh, this big black bat just fall from the sky and drop dead drop flat right uh, at your feet in the uh uh in the middle of the road and uh you hear ha i finally got one it's the uh the, the the guy in the tower that uh oh god what what did he do shot a he bat shot out of the sky shot a oh shot my. a giant bat uh, and it uh yeah i mean i'll i'll, I'll slow clap for him <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a good shot. I can't say it wasn't a good shot, but you could have dropped I'm going it somewhere to, else. Uh, my ears are going to go back, and I'm going to snarl and look at him with a mean, dead eye. Uh, you're going to look at the guy in the in yep. in the tower. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm looking like, up at him like. All right. I'm gonna get you. Uh, he he just kind of says, "They've been flying around this this uh, city for for quite some time. I've been shooting at them for a while. I've missed a whole bunch of them, but it's nice to finally get one." Oh. Have they been fl- around a lot, or just recently? Uh, Are these things common to the area? Like, <laughs> this is kind of terrifying. He goes, uh, no, they're just, they just been happened to flying around. Happen to be flying around recently. That's really creepy. Hmm. Right? Uh, I will examine the dead bat. Okay. I will, uh, tell you what it says. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it here. And I will, uh, uh I'm, I'm going to stand in front of Adon as he's examining the bat and making sure that this guy doesn't have a bead on him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Unwise. He he's got the high road, so you know I'll be yeah, your shield. You're, yeah, you're not wrong, but that would be super unwise if he doesn't actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you say that uh, there's something attached to the leg. Oh, a messenger bat. I shall remove what's attached to the leg. Uh, it says that. Uh, it just says that. Uh, Beware, there are spies in the city. Hmm. All right. Is that signed or anything? Uh, it is not signed. I mean, my guess would be that that was a, a message being sent to or from the, what's from what's her name? Oh, Mouthy. That's Mo- that's Mo- yeah, see, it catches on, doesn't it? It does. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. a handy nickname. <laughs> Yeah, she's trying to alert someone that we're here, but so we might actually have a bit of an advantage right now. 
her giant bat carrier pigeon is dead. Uh, I'm still suspicious, but that's mainly because oh. I want to maim something with the new mace. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um. So, um, can we talk to the guy in the tower? Like, we can. We we're in talking distance. Uh, yeah. He's. You kind of have to shout, but uh, he's like, right. if, just, just like, get somebody down here to clean this up. This is gross. <laughs> All right, I'll send one of my guys. Wait just a second. I might, might mount that and put it on my wall. Shut yeah, up, what quick. you do with it? Just get it to the street before you scare half the town. All right. So he can he sends one of the guys, one of the other tower uh, guards, uh, into the street, and he comes over and says, uh, "What do I have to pick up for this for Hardy?" <laughs> just dead thing in the middle of the road. This thing right here, gross. Do you let him know that there was? Do you take the note, or do you let him? Oh know no, yeah, we're was... we're keeping the note. Okay. Uh, he just kind of picks it up with two fingers and kind of walks back over to the the <laughs> tower and shuts the door behind him. <laughs> Nasty. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, it's up to you guys what do what you all want to do after that after that. Um I'm kind of good for the night. I don't think we needed Yeah, I don't think there's anything present really. Okay. So you go back to the inn, you each take uh separate you take split off between the four of you uh, into two separate rooms and rest up. I think, uh, yeah. I think actually um because you know I'm a creature of the night. Sure. Um, I I think I want to find like a a nice shady hidey spot just so I can watch and observe the bats throughout the night. Okay. You just want to watch and see if there's any bats that. Well, yeah, I want to see. You know, is it a flock? It was it just one? Is it a group? Like, where are they flying in from? <sighs> Direction wise. Um. Yeah, you don't see you take a, you take a uh, a lookout uh, spot, and uh, you don't really see any other bats that come through. Um, you might have seen some bats, mm -hmm. but they weren't as big as this one that that Hardy sh shot down from the tower. Okay, so more average size. Yeah, the average giant bat. Yeah, you know. average giant bat size. Right. You know, like you do. All right. So yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm good then. Okay, so you all yeah. rest. This, does uh, Baston after a while? Does does you rest up at all? Do you? Yeah, I'm going to like after a couple hours, I'll probably end up giving in and and okay. resting. Uh, yeah, so I'll restore restore all of your hit points and any uh, conditions that you might have. Real power. <laughs> um, you. Uh, you, you wake up uh, bright and early in the morning and uh, go downstairs and uh, uh, you know uh, Van Hild is is under is at the in the uh, big area in the hall and she's just like uh, can I can I uh, have the uh, kitchen staff uh, make you anything for breakfast before uh, before you depart for the day? Uh, we will take your finest breakfast. High protein, no veggies. <laughs> All right, uh, let me go back to the kitchen staff, and I will uh, see what they can whip up for you. And uh, you can see she opens the doors, and there's a few cooks in there, and they're uh, making uh, all sorts of uh, dishes. And yeah, you see them cracking some eggs and putting it on the stove. And and uh, a few minutes later, she comes out with uh, some steaks and sausages and eggs some toast and toast. Uh, eggs yeah. eggs and she looks at uh, McCander and says these are not duck ah, eggs ah, i just ah, want ah, to be clear ah. <laughs> ah. 
it's it's fine. I understand. I understand what people do in certain parts so of the world. Hey, Steve McCander, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, she puts down quite the spread for you all and says, uh, I hope you all slept well. Oh, yes. Um, um, I, is there anything I can else I can get for you? I am not entirely sure. I don't particularly require anything else. Um, we are actually... No. Looking at possibly setting out again in the next couple of okay. couple of uh, well, I don't know even if you know if it might even be today. <laughs> we don't have anything else pressing in town, so we may be off on our next adventure. But we would love to come back and stay with you here again at the three. Well, uh, you're you're more than welcome anytime. Feel free to uh, feel free to uh, stay as much as you want. Uh, we have. Some of the best hospitality here in in the outskirt, and I'm surprised. Uh, you know, I'm usually usually my staff is here to wait on people, but evidently she did not show up this morning. I don't know what uh, where Annabella is, but uh, I'm sure she won't be too long this morning. That's but... unfortunate because we really enjoyed her company. Yes, yes, yeah, she's quite lovely. Mm. Um, okay, so let's finish breakfast. Um, in passing, uh, whilst, uh, she does her little daily routine thing, um, can we try to like on the sly inquire as to where she might be staying or living or, um, yeah, you know that she, she usually stays in the inn. Um, you know, that's part of her, her, uh, her income is that she stays there and, and, uh, yeah, She's. I'll, I'll send someone up for her. I'm, I'm sure she's just fine. I'm sure she's just behind her chores or her morning routine, or maybe she overslept. I, I'm. I'm sure she'll be down soon. Kind of want to go with, but I can't really come up with a good reason why I would want to go with. <laughs> like, I kind of want to be like, hey, I want to come up there with you, but uh, I don't have any legitimate reason to do so other than being weird. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, well, uh, I guess we will we will we will linger a bit after they send somebody upstairs to see if uh, if they come down with a report of any sort. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, after after a little while, uh, someone comes back down and says, "Oh yeah, no, An Annabelle's here. She's just she's running behind uh, Van Hild. Uh, she, she'll, she'll be down shortly. She okay. apologizes for any." That's fair. I mean, I just wanted to make sure she was all right. Yeah. Evidently, she was up late last night. And she overslept. Jesus, the urge to say thou chicken bones. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, all right. Do we want to do anything else in town? Uh, I would like to find that Smith, but we don't have Smith. to role play it all out if we don't want to. We, we, we can. Uh, oh, do you we, want to ask Van Hild about this about another Smith? Oh, uh, yeah, actually. Um, yeah, um, she's like, she she says, uh, actually, this the city used to have uh, three Smiths in it, and uh, the the quality of work that. Uh, oh, shoot, I can't even remember what, what, what was that guy's name. But uh, all I can think of was Ballin, and I know that's yeah, not right. Barden, <laughs> Bal, uh, Bail, Bailden, or whatever. Bailden, yeah. Yes. Uh, or Ban Baden Badenor Banor Banana Door. That's his name now. Uh, Banana Door. The quality of his work forced the other Smiths out of business, and they had to close up shop and move over to another town. Well then, his work is impeccable, and it's hard to compete with. Yeah, I'm just kind of kind of gonna scoff and uh, be like, "All right then." No, I'm ready for some creepy forest cult killing. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you pack up your things and uh, head out of town. And uh, you start uh, traveling. Which 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 way are you going to go? You're going to go to the... Uh... Um, I was thinking uh, west. You're thinking to yeah. the. Uh, you were thinking about going to the. 
trying to find the map here. Uh, you're trying to find the. Think, are you going I to think, the creepy forest or the mines that? Uh, well, the the feet on the map are in the lower left hand corner, right? Uh, yes. Yes. So we've got the feet. So we don't want to go that way. Uh, so the Temple of the Purple Flame is north. The uh, Bothhild's load is west. Okay. So we, I mean, there's no guarantee that all four pieces came from the exact spots on the map. So do we right. want to go check out Bothhild's? Uh, yeah. Seriously, Bothhild's load? This is L O D E. Oh, thank God. Is that what it's called? Load? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how it's no, said. That is, That's that how is. it's said. That is how you pronounce that. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's go. All are right. we going on foot? Or are we gonna get some horses? Can we all ride horses? I, Macander, I I'm sorry, this is gonna sound terrible, but can you ride a horse? Uh, I'm gonna assume so, only because I have royal upbringing. I probably would have had access Fair to. Enough. Uh, and is, that, is this like a skill? I don't know. I don't know I don't, either. I don't. I don't, I don't see anything for that. Maybe you um, have a wagon. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you don't have anybody that's, uh, there's, uh, there's no stables or any, uh, uh, there's no stables in there's no outskirts? Stables. No, yeah, no, we're gonna walk. So you gotta have to walk. have to walk. You'll be fine. Walk like a bunch of plebs, okay. You'll be yeah. fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm taller than the rest of you. I can walk faster. Well, maybe not Baston. Baston can probably run pretty good. <laughs> so yeah so you're walking down this uh this you know dusty sandy road a dark desert highway west towards uh west on the map um towards the, in the direction that uh you know it's it's indicated there and, uh, in the direction that's indicated yeah i don't know <laughs> um along at a medium pace oh <laughs> um yeah can somebody give me some sort of uh spot hidden roll please Ooh. Hidden? oh i would like to disavow myself from that one because yeah last time who's in front who's in front of I'll this just, uh, i'll do spot hidden i can yeah. do spot hidden i succeeded okay I got an eight. Yeah, all of a sudden you kind of see something rustling up a, up ahead and off to the side of the road. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, do you proceed to... Uh, what, I just see rustling? Yeah. I would like to use uh, willpower points. Okay. Uh, to use my hunting instincts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. This counts as an action in combat. You can follow the scent of your prey for a full day. Do I gain any, uh, like, it's what it could be? Probably it's something. I mean, you kind of can take a, take a sniff to the air and yeah. you... Something kind of smells almost ro rodent-like. Oh yeah! And all of a sudden, instincts. <laughs> all of a sudden, not only do you start to smell that rodent-like smell, but you smell three other smells at the same time. Oh, three other different smells. Yes. Is the rodent smell like being cooked rodent? No, no. <laughs> okay. It smells like just kind of like, um, just kind of smells like if you were in like a sewer and like you had like a rat like. Oh next man! To you. So it's offensive to my nose. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's powerful. But uh, all right, so I got the scent. So I'm gonna creep closer to this this bush. All right. Uh, all of a sudden. These thugs jump out from uh, the the forest uh, around you and behind you and in front of yes. you 
is this rat-like man with a greasy smile. Uh, and he kind of smiles with these teeth that are all kind of rotted and and uh, a couple big teeth in the front um yeah just just doesn't uh, doesn't have much to be desired in in uh, personal charm either and he says yeah hand over your valuables he hisses or your lives and your adventures end right here and uh yeah we're going to stop the session at that point oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, I, I smile back with a big bad wolfy grin <laughs> as I take my mace and just kind of get ready. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. All right. So at this point, what we do is uh, we kind of uh, do some uh, leveling up. Uh, anybody that rolled any. Uh, so you get you get experience for uh, participating in the session. Yay. Let me let me. Let me find the rules for uh, leveling up in this in this in, in this game. Um, uh, let's see here. Let me find it here. Oh, there is writing animals uh, in this core rule book, so we will. Uh, we just all suck at it. <laughs> we, we will all figure that out uh, later. Oh, we have a um, dog, a duck, a halfling, and a really tall guy. So yeah. Right. Basically, what you need to do is you need to. If you rolled any ones or twenties, uh, I hope you mar marked it down next to your skill that uh, you rolled the. Uh... Yeah, I did roll a twenty on my uh, on my int. One. Awesome. Or my will, sorry, not my int. Um, yep. You also get a few. Uh, let me find it here. Of course, I can't find it now immediately. You also get some uh, if you encountered any or defeated any opponents or, or bad uh, and any enemies uh, you get one of those you get a check mark for that you get a check mark for uh, participating in the session you also get a check mark if you um, worked a, w along with your uh, motivation do you all have motivations yes yeah. you all should have motivations uh, yeah okay I did not do that this time, though. So. <laughs> Trying to find it here. Um, but yes, let's. I can't find. I found all of the. This this rule book is amazing, by the way. Um, it's got quite a quite a bit of a bestiary and all sorts of rules. So we'll we'll worry about the leveling up uh, off off camera. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get that all taken care of. Also, uh, Baston, I, I will give you uh, stats for your uh, Morning Star for your mace, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll hopefully maybe have a, uh, a fifth uh, part part of your uh, first, fifth member of your party show up as well. Uh, boat ever arrives. Yeah, he's <laughs> so. on the slow boat to mo to outskirts. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to do it for, for episode one. Uh, if you enjoyed that, uh, please hit the like button down below. Uh, if you uh, would like to see more of this campaign, let us know in the comments. Uh, we're thinking about doing this hopefully once a month, maybe the last uh, Wednesday of every, every, every month in 2023. Maybe not all the way through the year, but we'll see. It depends on how, how fast they find these three other pieces of the <laughs> statuette to... Uh, Tune in uh, in 2027 when we exactly. find the fourth piece. <laughs> exactly. So um, I will tell you that uh, if you haven't uh, already uh, backed the Kickstarter for Dragon Bane and you would like to back it, uh, there is a link for uh, the pledge manager. Uh, you can go back it and uh, you'll get it, uh, I think, right around the same time as the Kickstarter backers will. It's got a whole bunch of content. Um, the box set is really Ooh, well priced, uh, I think. Yeah, the new version that they just came out with for the uh, for the rules basically triples the uh, the quick start rules. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, I, as I was just trying to find the uh, the you know the leveling up, I, I couldn't find it right away because I didn't realize. Um, I was I I looked very briefly at the magic, but there's actually a magical mishaps table that I should have rolled on. Oh, well, that you can roll on. You're not forced to. It's an optional thing, but it would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, that would have definitely been a, a little bit. 
you know, it's little things like that. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of get more and more of it uh, learned as, as we go along, but it's, it's definitely fun. I, I like it. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it as well. Uh, let us know in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone for joining us live. I want to thank uh, Chibi Peach for, for uh, the super chats. That was greatly, uh, very generous of you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, I want to thank Austin, Jason, Josh, and Amanda for being a part of this. It's a big commitment to uh, run a campaign and uh, be a part of this uh, for such a dur for a duration. So I appreciate you giving your time. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. This has been Victory Condition Gaming because winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. I'll see you next time. Bye now. This video is brought to you by Black Moon Games. Check out their products at shop-black-moon.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you would be so kind, make sure you hit that like, uh, comment, and subscribe, all the YouTube jazz that we're supposed to do here. Uh, it really is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to support us more, uh, you can uh, check us out on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com backslash victory condition gaming. have all sorts of Patreon perks, and it definitely helps support our show.